Welcome friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Do you ever go to the art store and find yourself totally baffled by just how many different types of brushes there are in the aisle? Well, don't worry, I got you because today we're gonna go over the best brushes for oil painting so that you do not have to break the bank getting a million different kits and all kinds of different stuff. I'm gonna walk you through all my favorite brushes and even a few oddballs just so that you can see how they all work. So I hope you guys learned something today. If you do, hit that subscribe button and make sure you ding the bell so you're back every week for all the best art biz advice and fine art tutorials. Thanks guys, enjoy. The three styles of brushes that most artists find themselves using are either a natural boar's head bristle, or we've got a synthetic sable, or we've got more of a natural sable. Now there are many different animal types of hair that are used for paint brushes, but those are sort of the main ones that we're going to focus on. Now the natural boar's hair bristles, I recommend as more of a thick application of paint when you're doing a larger surface perhaps a background or some other sort of large area if you're working on a very very large canvas or if you want to have especially painterly brush strokes you want to really see all the strokes within your work and or you are laying down an impasto layer which impasto basically means a very thick application of paint you are going to find happiness with these more bristle style brushes Natural hair brushes are going to be a bit better for if you are trying to do more of a smooth finish, more of a refined look or blended out more, especially if you're doing features of the face or something like that. These smoother brushes don't collect quite as much paint as the coarser bristle hair brushes, but that's okay because if you're doing a delicate application, you don't necessarily need a lot of paint. So there are many artists, professional artists, that swear by the natural hair brushes as opposed to the synthetic hair brushes. As a beginner, I wouldn't be too concerned about getting natural hair brushes since they are a bit more expensive. Even myself, a seasoned oil painter, I still use plenty of synthetic brushes and have no problems with them. So for the most part, the only natural boar's head bristles I have are on larger brushes whereas I tend to do natural and synthetic for smaller brushes. So your three main types of brushes are gonna be your rounds, your filberts, and your flats. Now let's talk flats. These are better for filling in more medium sized areas on your canvas if you have some surface areas, let's say you're doing a still life, maybe the tabletop or maybe the wall behind it, or maybe if you're doing some architecture, something like that, more object oriented. These flats are very good. They really do have that nice stiff edge, which will give you a nice edge, whatever you're trying to paint with them. You can blend with these, but these are really, really good for fill in areas. Your round brushes will be your go-to for detail work. Now they can get rather large, but these are really good, especially for filling in detail work, such as faces, hands, that kind of thing. And these round brushes are especially good for blending or for refining out any details at the end of the painting. Now these filberts are some of my favorites. These are perfect for blending and laying in paint in more of medium sized areas. They've got the nice soft roundness so you're not gonna get a stiff edge anywhere, but they're still wide and flat enough to be able to lay in paint. I probably use filbert brushes more than anything else when doing my general painting and the round brushes for all my refined details. As you dive deeper into your love of oil painting, you may find yourself needing some specialty brushes. If you're needing to get into a tight corner or make a really sharp edge, these angular brushes are quite great. Conversely, if you need to make a nice long line, these liner brushes work especially well. These ones I usually use for things like hair, long strands of hair, 
and these angular brushes would usually be maybe for architecture or getting into tight folds of fabric. And one quick note, although they can look extremely similar, do not attempt to use watercolor brushes with your oil paints. They will not work. On a structural level, like on a microscopic level, the bristles are actually slate shaped slightly differently, which is why these brushes are made with different bristles. They are literally made to pick up lots and lots of water, not to mention the fact that they are very, very soft. So if you put in something very stiff like oil paint that is not that does not flow the same way that water does and put it on these brushes, it's going to destroy them. And as you paint, it's just going to be too floppy. You're not going to be able to actually control the oil paint. It's going to be too stiff. So not only will you ruin your brushes, but you will not be able to effectively paint. I also wanted to share some good news about any old brushes you might have. Old brushes with frayed ends work quite well as blending brushes when you need them. You don't need blending brushes all the time, but occasionally you do. And so the soft and frayed edges of some of your old paint brushes are actually very handy to keep around. I much prefer them to fan brushes, which if you'll notice, I have not even shown you fan brushes because personally, I have not used them in years. I think they blend down way too much. I'm not going to suggest them and I'm not going to demo them, but they are another type of brush out there if you feel like looking into them. When deciding to purchase either long handled or short handled brushes, I usually try to think about what I'll be painting with them. If you are looking for more of a painterly effect where you are going to be blending areas or you really want to get a good look at the large picture or perhaps when you're sketching out your initial drawing if you choose to do that in paint you're going to want a long handled brush these are really nice for stepping back and really getting a feel of your entire painting and kind of loosening up in the wrist a little bit you're going to want to get the shorter handled brushes when it's time for ultra detailed work when you're really trying to get in there and do some fine lining and some detailed work then the short handled brushes brushes will work First, we're going to compare two flats, one of them being the natural boar's head and the other one being a synthetic. These two are the closest in size that I could find, but I wanted you to see the difference in the paint pickup and application and generally how a flat brush operates with the paint. So first I'll start with the hog hair brush. Now this can pick up an immense amount of paint. I mean, this could literally pick up that entire glob, although I'm not going to do that but I do want to show you that it can pick up a large amount of paint and lay it down with one fell swoop. And this is exactly what an impasto method of painting is, is laying down very large, thick layers of paint. This can take weeks, sometimes even months to dry and you will go through your paint tubes so quickly. So I highly recommend that you only paint with a thick impasto layer if you have a bit of cash to spare right off the bat. Now the same size brush, of course it could technically pick up that much, but it doesn't quite lay it down. Do you see that? How that was not so much, it didn't create a wave. It didn't, it didn't invigorate the brush stroke. It just sort of smashes down on the canvas. So you can see that this is not an effective way to lay down heavy, thick layers of paint. It just, it doesn't give the same painterly feel no matter what you do. It's not going to give you that nice feel. So this flat brush is much better for laying in larger swatches. Maybe if you need to get right on the side of something. So this is great for larger to medium, of course with the flat brush. And these brushes are actually, you can get them quite large and you don't have to necessarily do the impasto with them. They are really nice because you can pick up a lot. So you can literally paint and paint and paint and paint and paint and paint and paint with these and really cover large surfaces, which can be very convenient if you are trying to cover a very large area of your canvas. So just with that one brush pickup, I was able to cover you know, I mean, obviously, except for the middle part that this brush did, a huge, huge piece of this, and it's still, still going. But you can see 
that you're not really going to be able to get very refined edges with this brush. You would really need much more of a fine brush to get nice edges. The bristle hair brushes are especially good for drama. If you are wanting to lay in something else in a big way, this will help you keep that bit of meat on top so that you're able to overlay wet onto wet. Whereas these flatter brushes are going to kind of blend in there a little bit more. A flat creates a very nice even stroke. The nice thing about brush strokes is that they tend to look a lot like the bristle shape. So here we have a nice regular flat and then remember we have the filberts. These are a bit of a cross between a flat and a round, a rounded flat if you will. And these ones See that? Give a softer end. Of course, you can get nice and straight and clean on both sides, but they're going to give you a much softer, rounder. You'll be able to do a bit more feathering and blending with these. Let's say we're using a flat. We had an edge that we needed to get close to. The flat would work very nicely for that. And then you are still able to blend out. However, you're going to get those harsher lines. It's going to be harder to get smooth. Now look what happens when I use the filbert's head, the filbert bristles, oh, and I can still get a pretty good edge, although I wouldn't be able to get any corners. But now let's bring in some of that yellow and see how the filbert is able to accomplish a much smoother blend. See there's no lines. There's no chop lines in there. You're still able to see brush strokes, which brush strokes are great. You want to see some brush strokes, but it's a much smoother blend. Now let's chat about round brushes. For the most part, although there are all sizes available, there are larger sizes available, I don't tend to use larger size rounds. If I'm going to use a larger size round, I'll usually just head for a filbert. So for the most part, I use rounds in much smaller sizes. So just for an example, a round will lay in your paint nicely. It's not a problem. You can use it pretty much the same way a filbert does. In fact, you can tell as the round lays down, it's quite similar. You might get a little bit more of a point. So for certain things, if you need that little point, but honestly, it's quite similar to a filbert. But I feel like sometimes because it's round, I'm not able to get quite as straight edges with it. So this really is much better for working in things and not quite as good for any kind of harsh or sharp edges. Of course, if you're doing figures and um, natural curves like that, you don't necessarily need sharp edges. So it's not that you can't edge things with this, but for the most part, if I'm going to use a larger round, I'm going to just go ahead and go for the filbert. So I want to show you these smaller rounds. These are really great for getting in detail work when you really want to be able to get something very small, intricate, get in some detail. These are great. Okay, and they just get more and more detail oriented the smaller they go. Now you do have to 
regularly pick up paint with them. They don't hold a lot of paint. Of course, the smaller they go, especially the rounds do not tend to hold a ton of paint. But when you're really trying to do ultra, ultra detail work, they get in there. When I'm doing things like eyelashes or tiny highlights or depending on the size of the portrait that I'm doing, I might need to use these for an earlobe or the lips. Right? So you just get smaller and smaller as the rounds go down. However, if you would like a smaller detail brush that you might not be able to get quite the fine point but need to pick up more paint, I highly recommend these liner brushes. I just did mine in Solvent because you want it to be a little bit more fluid with the paint. But if you have a little dip in your solvent, not too much, but get it a little wet, and then come into whatever paint you want, you're wanting with your liner brush, you can get extremely long flow with these. And especially if you're trying to do tiny wisps of hair, these are great. I also did want to show you a little bit of an edging brush. These are nice, they're not totally necessary. I feel like most of the time, whatever you can do with an edging brush, you can usually do with a flat. But this does give you a really nice corner there if you ever need to get in. I've liked using these before for doing um, folds of fabric because sometimes folds of fabric can be very soft and supple but can also have one side have a bit of a harsher edge. So these ones, although you can shade and blend with them like regular, normally they are not used in a flat way, but they are instead used on one side like this. So it's a slightly different way to hold your hand when using one of these angular brushes. So the ultimate question is, what paint brushes should you buy specifically? Now, my little bit of advice is, don't go out and buy paint brush kits. Because what winds up happening is you wind up getting like 10, 12, maybe even 20 brushes, and you'll only wind up really gravitating to a handful of them. And then you'll wind up with all these extra brushes that you never use that sit around. Trust me, because I have a few brushes like that myself. And so I would just recommend, think about what you wanna paint first, okay? If you wanna paint, let's say a still life, you're gonna probably want some more medium to small size brushes. So go to the art store with that in mind and grab yourself one or two flats and maybe one or two filberts and one or two rounds, all in different sizes, thinking about what level of detail you want to put into your work. And that's the best way to start. You could literally go to the art store and spend 20 or $25 on a nice, you know, little handful of brushes enough to get you started because what you will find naturally is that you will know when you need a new brush. It's amazing because what will happen is you'll be painting something and you'll just realize that you can't get the level of detail or the level of control or maybe the level of coverage. Maybe you need something bigger and you'll realize it as it comes up. And that's what makes going to the art store so much fun when you know what you're looking for because you're like, ooh, I have this thing that I just try to tackle in my painting. I didn't have the right tools and equipment, so now I get to go to the art store with a real idea in mind of what exactly I want. So my recommendation to you is maybe start off with four to six brushes, don't spend a whole lot of money, and then just buy more as you need them. I mean, who doesn't love an excuse to go by the art store anyways? So thanks for being here today, guys. I hope you learned so much about brushes. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ding the bell, and come back every single week for artsy goodness. And these next few weeks coming up, I've got all kinds of good things all about oil painting. So make sure you don't miss a thing. See you next time.